So in video two, we're going to look at finding the x-intercepts of a quadratic function. So for our example, we're going to find the x-intercepts or zeros. A synonym for x-intercept is the zero or a zero of the function. We're going to find the x-intercepts for this particular quadratic function. But before we start to do that, we want to recall a few things from earlier in the semester. One, we want to recall that when we have a parabola, it may not intersect the x-axis. And if it doesn't intersect the x-axis, there are no x-intercepts. <clears throat> it's possible that a parabola can just touch the x-axis, in which case you get one x-intercept. And it's also possible that a parabola intersects the x-axis in two spots, in which case you would get two x-intercepts. So when we look for the x-intercepts of a quadratic function, we want to recognize we might not find any, or they may be complex intercepts, which, uh, which we looked at earlier in the semester. We could get a single intercept, we could get two. And earlier in the semester, the way that we determined whether or how many intercepts we had was by looking at the discriminant of the quadratic equation, or sorry, quadratic formula, the negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus the 4ac all over the 2a. And what we had identified at that time is that the b squared minus 4ac is what is going to drive the solutions in the sense that we know if we have a negative number under a square root, we can't get real number answers. We get complex numbers. So we called this piece under the square root or under the radical. We called that the discriminant at the time. And the only thing that was different between then and now is that now we're using function notation to describe things. So the discriminant uh, was just the b squared minus 4ac and we had identified that if it's less than zero or negative we get no real solutions. We get complex numbers coming out of this and that would correspond to the function not intersecting the x-axis. If b squared minus 4ac was equal to zero, so if this is a zero under here, we just get negative b plus or minus zero is just negative b over 2a. We get a single number or a single value for x, in which case there's one real solution. When it was a negative number, we got no real solutions. And then if b squared minus 4ac was greater than 0, we recognized that we had a positive number under, or positive real number under the square root, so we're going to get negative b plus or minus that number, which was going to generate two real solutions. So we could, if we wanted to, before we even decided to look for the x-intercepts of the function negative x squared plus 8x minus 12, we could look at the discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac, recognizing from here that a is going to be negative 1, b is going to be 8, and c is going to be the negative 12, right? Because with the function it has the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So we just read off our coefficients. This is the coefficient on the x to the zero term. Um, and if we pop those in, we get b squared. This is going to be 8 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is negative 12, which is going to be 64, negative, negative, negative. Three negatives is going to keep it a minus. It's going to be minus 48, and 64 minus 48 is 16, which is a positive real number, so we expect to get two intercepts for this particular function. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and find those intercepts on the next slide. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, before we go to the next slide actually, when we, if we do have intercepts on that parabola, or that quadratic function, that we want to recognize that the we're looking for the x coordinate the y coordinate is always going to be zero the function is at height zero as it crosses the x-axis so we may not know what x is but we do know what y is and this is what drives our finding of the x-intercepts we just set y equal to zero or 
we set y equal to 0 or if we're using function notation we set the function equal to 0 and solve so let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> locate the x-intercepts or zeros of this function so in other words we need to take negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 and we need to set this equal to 0 and solve it and this is just a quadratic equation in a single variable and we've already looked at solution techniques for quadratic equations in a single variable and we had three main tools or there there's some other things that we did but we had three main tools for for solving single variable quadratic uh, equations we either factored and we used the zero product property or we used the quadratic equation or everybody's favorite technique completing the square those were the three big tools so we can solve this particular quadratic using any of these three tools so if we're using the tool of factoring negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 equals 0 our first step might be to say well this negative in front of the x squared makes my life a little bit annoying so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 you don't have to do this but you certainly could and then we recognize that if the leading coefficient is a 1 we probably don't need to use the um, AC method or the um, factoring by grouping technique that we learned factoring by grouping probably isn't necessary if the leading coefficient is a 1 and if the values for X are nice if the zeros are nice integer values we can probably guess factor by guessing so it, it would have to be X times X to get X squared and I see a plus 12 so we need to make a negative 8 from the factors of 12 so it looks like a minus 6 and a minus 2 will work and we can check our work by multiplying this back out using the distributive property so x times x is our x squared we're going to get a minus 6x and a minus 2 times x is minus 2x so minus 6x minus 2x is minus 8x which gives us the middle term and negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12 so multiplication to check our work is something that we can do and then once we write it as a product of two terms we know that the zero product property tells us that either x minus 6 is 0 or x minus 2 must be 0 and adding 6 to both sides we get x equals 6 or adding 2 to both sides we get we get x is equal to 2 that's pretty horrible x is equal to 2 and the x-intercepts are actually locations so the intercepts should write them as ordered pairs because they're locations so we have an x in we have an x-intercept at 2 input 2 output 0 right the outputs are 0 when the inputs 2 or if we input 6 we get an output of 0 so that would be finding the x-intercepts by factoring if we use the quadratic equation it's simply a matter of identifying that a is equal to negative 1 from right here b is equal to 8 from right here <clears throat> and c is equal to negative 12 and then we know that x is equal to i on the quadratic formula it's a formula so i want to see the x equals x equals what x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and now we just plug and chug so the opposite of b will be the opposite of 8 which is just negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a and this is the discriminant under here and we just calculated that as a 16 so we're going to get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 16 when we simplify the discriminant all over negative 2 so this is going to be equal to negative 8 plus or minus 4 all over negative 2 equals we get negative 8 
minus 4 is negative 12 over negative 2, or we get negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4 over 2, and this is going to give us x equals negative 12 divided by negative 2 is the 6, and negative 4 divided by that should be a negative 2 there is 2. So we get the same two numbers we got over here using factoring. Clearly factoring was easier in this case, and we would still need to take these two values and convert them into the ordered pairs that locate the intercepts. And the other way that we could have done this, which we'll go ahead and do just for practice because I know everybody loves completing the square so much, we can complete the square. We can go negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 is 0. To do completing the square, the leading coefficient must be a positive 1, so we multiply through by negative 1, multiply both sides by negative 1, right? Negative 1. Ooh, come on, eraser. Can I fit it in here? A negative 1 times that stuff, 0 times negative 1. Nothing changes there. And here the operators will switch, so we'll get negative times negative is positive, minus 8x and plus a 12. And then the way that we did completing the square was we subtracted the constant term from both sides to get it out of our way. We then took the coefficient on the linear term, on the x term, then minus 8. We halved it, we squared it, We added that quantity to both sides to complete the square. And this gave us a 4 sitting over here. And then we recognize that we had completed a square. What square did we complete? It's going to be x. And it's going to be the thing that we squared. So in this case, a minus 4 got squared. And now we use this uh, square root, the square root property. We say, hey, we can take the square root of both sides square root of this side will cancel the squaring. We take the square root of the right hand side. We have to remember we go plus or minus and then we get x equals add 4 to both sides. 4 plus or minus a 2. I'm probably getting, I probably need to pull it this way. My head's probably somewhere right in here. And so we're going to get x equals 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 plus 2 is 6. So we get the same answer no matter which, no matter which technique we use. In any of the three cases, we still need to write the ordered pairs explicitly.